Hey everyone, and welcome to Group Builders, the show where we create together. I'm your host, Disorderly Cone, and in this episode, we're going to be building our very first plane model on the show, the U2 Dragon Lady from Metal Earth. Now, plane models are kind of in their own separate category when it comes to metal models, not just because of all of the interesting details that we have to do, but with the newer models, they almost require a 3D shaping. Now, I have built some other plane models in the past, but they weren't on the show here, and these ones were well a lot simpler I mean this guy here really didn't have a whole lot of parts and well, back in the day I wasn't really good at cylinders and I'm not gonna show you a close-up of this just because of that but it is a uh, interesting progression to see how they went from really simple to a little bit more complicated and I think the dragon lady is a perfect model for us to start with when it comes to our plane models groovers let's get down to the workbench and open up our package There we have it, all four pages we need to build the U2 Dragon Lady. Looking at these instructions, there really doesn't seem to be a whole lot of parts here, but the ones we do have need quite a bit of shaping. The first thing we're going to look at is how to form some of these shapes, like our nose, and how to get some good definition in our parts. Next, we'll look at shaping our engines and talk about how to get them connected correctly with both wings. And finally, we'll talk about getting all of our parts together and getting our U2 looking the best it can possibly be. But before we jump into it, we should touch on the basics for all those new builders out there. First things first, these metal models require us to cut out our pieces then shape them using whatever we can. Once we have our parts correctly shaped, we can then connect them together by bending or twisting our tabs. The way we bend or twist our tabs is indicated in the instructions by these circles and triangles. Personally, I always try to follow the instructions the first time when it comes to bending our tabs if I can. Then when the build is complete, I'll go over everything again to change anything that might stand out. That's how you get that museum quality you hear so much about. We're approaching target zone now. Begin your surveillance run. It's just not the same. Oh, uh, well, we have definitely a lot of interesting shapes to get here on this U2 Dragon Lady, and that's going to require some special tools. Luckily, we have a tool expert to explain what we need. Timothy? Finally, the viewers have voted for something useful. An actual spy plane such as the U2 Dragon Lady requires a full team to maintain it, but yours will only require a steady hand and some special tools. For this build, you will need nippers, tweezers, pliers, cylinder tools, and tapping punches. I have to agree, Timothy. The whole spy plane thing is really neat. And the fact that this thing flies so high in the air and is able to get those high-definition photos is even cooler. Now, Groovers, these are just our suggestions when it comes to our tools, and we really don't need anything but nippers and tweezers to get the job done. But of course, having the right tools will make getting all this 3D detail a lot easier. All right, now we've looked at our instructions and we have all of our tools. There's only one thing left to do, and that's for you to hit that red subscribe button down below. We're currently trying to get to 4,000 subscribers, and we would love your help. And if you haven't pressed that like button yet, go ahead and give that one a push too. That's how we grow here on the show. We really do appreciate all the support from everybody out there. All right, now let's get to the build. The U2 Dragon Lady from Metal Earth is a build that requires you to look a little bit ahead to get everything just right. With these points, we hope to get a quick overview and review of the model, but if you want to see the full build, check out the description down below for that link to the video. Now, the first thing we're going to be talking about when it comes to building the U2 is how to form the definition in our pieces so that they have that aerodynamic finish. What does that mean? Well, if we take a quick look at our plane, we can see that it's supposed to have these rounded edges, and that detail adds a lot to the overall model. Let's take a look at our wings quickly. There are many ways that we could attempt to get definition in our piece, but I found the easiest way is to start by forming with your shaping tool in the middle of both halves. You will need to apply pressure in the center and then roll the tool back and forth. 
After a few passes, you should see almost a W forming with the curving we've done. Now go to the edges of the piece and apply a little bit more pressure than before while rolling the edge. You might need to make a few slight adjustments to get everything shaped the way you like it. When it comes to connecting our wing together, I recommend slowly bringing the two halves together and seeing how they fit. Do you see any big gaps between them? Well, that means you need to round the edges just a little bit more. Make sure to be careful if you are using tweezers not to overdo it here, as it's really easy to warp the piece and that can look really messy. The rule of thumb here for getting a nice look really should be the bigger the tool, the better. Once we place our two halves together and the gap is gone, we're good to go and move on to our next step. This method works great for making definition in almost all of our parts on the U2. The important thing to remember though when using this method is not to press too much into our parts. It can leave marks on them or worse, take that paint off if we're not too careful. This is especially true when it comes to forming the pieces like our nose cone. With part 28, we need to get all of the rings to meet. By using a forming tool, we can get a start on that cone of shape. But once we have everything started, we need to move to our tweezers. I recommend starting with the furthest part. That's the end there where everything comes to a point. If we're not careful with this particular area, we can get what's called a teardrop shaping. By starting at this area first and then working our way down the piece, we can avoid that teardrop shape because you have more access to the front. A similar method can also be used to help us form our engines, which brings us to our second point, how to shape and attach our engines to our U2. For this, let's look at parts 9, 10, 11, and 12. All of these parts need to be shaped around the same size for them to fit not just together, but also on our wing. To start, I recommend using a tool much bigger than needed, and then slowly work your way down to the right size. By doing this, you avoid any kind of hot spots or possible misshapings. This method also allowed me to test fit my parts together, so I was able to know if the pieces were going to work before I installed them. Anytime we're connecting multiple pieces like this in a series, it's always a good idea to test fit them so we're not fiddling with the parts while we're installing them. Doing that can lead to loose or possibly broken parts. When it comes to attaching our engines onto our wings, you need to free bend the tabs a little bit to get everything into their insertion holes. Don't force your tabs in place here because doing so can scratch the paint off and doing that on the wing will be super noticeable. One thing I want you to keep in mind when it comes to installing our engines is they need to be installed the same way on both sides, especially with parts 10 and 12 and 16 and 18. If you have parts 12 overlapping part 10, you need to make sure that part 18 is also overlapping part 16. And if you've done the opposite, then vice versa. On my U2, I didn't do this. And to be honest, it looks a little bit lopsided. So consistency is key here for a sleek looking U2. And speaking of getting a sleek U2, our third and final point is about connecting all of our parts together. At first look, some of these connections look easy, but you'll quickly find out that the tabs don't always line up. Because we're bending these unique shapes, we easily overbend or underbend our parts. The best way to get everything to line up correctly is to match them up several times before securing them. Pre-bending your tabs is also recommended here, but again, because they're such unique shapes, the tabs aren't always bent the same way. Take your time with your tabs. It's very easy to scratch the paint on this model and no one likes that. When securing our tabs, you might be tempted to hide them. While in some areas this can be achieved, overall to get a nice connection on all of our parts, it's best to follow the directions first. At the end, we can go back and fold over some of the tabs back to their black painted side, but unfortunately, some of the tabs will have to be left on their silver side. If you wanted to hide them a little bit more, you could use a Sharpie to touch up the silver tabs or a little bit of small black paint. Just make sure to test the paint on a spare part so you know if the paint matches the U2. After securing our parts, if you have the opportunity, I would try my best to form the pieces the way I want them. Once the model is all together, it can be really hard to fix some of that 3D detail that we were trying to achieve from earlier. Wow, look at this thing. It really came together well.
And there we have it, the U2 Dragon Lady from Metal Earth, all complete with stand. Now, Groovers, this was a model that everyone voted on at home for us to build, and I think it was a really good one to choose. I haven't really built a whole lot of plain models before, and getting a chance to try this whole 3D texture thing was a really awesome idea. Now, is this model for beginners? It is a little bit complicated. Some of the detail, especially when it comes to getting our engines to look correctly and getting this nose cone also to be formed and getting all these pieces together can be a real challenge. And if you haven't built any of these metal models before and this might be your first one, well, you might be a little bit frustrated with how some of the parts get formed. Just remember to take your time and be patient. Some of this detail is pretty complicated. Even for an experienced model builder like myself, I really had a hard time trying to get this uh, to be exactly the way I wanted it to, and I really still don't have it the way I would like it. Now, again, if I come back here and just kind of keep going over the model over time, I'm sure I would be able to get everything looking exactly the way I like it. And for the pictures I put on Instagram, I'm definitely going to do that. Overall, I would recommend this model for anyone out there who really enjoys plain models and has a couple of them underneath their belt and wants to maybe up their game a little bit with some more of this detailed shaping. All right, Groove Builders, that brings us to the end of our show. I had a really good time building the U2 Dragon Lady with you, and if you guys had a good time, don't forget to press that like button. For more videos like this, hit subscribe as well, as we've got all kinds of really cool content coming out in the future. Want to help the channel grow? Check out GrooveBuilders.ca. We have all kinds of really cool models on there, including our U2 Dragon Lady, at great prices with fast shipping to the United States and Canada. All right, Groovers, until next time, keep building. Now, I gotta build a hanger to put this big thing into it. The wingspan's huge.